So we're going to go get started. I'm going to um, turn this over to Derek, and uh, we'll, we'll get started with the presentation. Derek? All right. Thanks a lot, Paul. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining our webcast today on quick and safe blast design. My name is Derek Rash. I'm the Senior Product Manager here at Laser Technology, and I, I focus in the Professional Measurement Division, where we sell our products and, and manuf or get our products out to the GIS, construction, utilities, and the mining market. Uh, joining me today in this presentation are a couple of uh, panelists, um, and I'd like to introduce those. Uh, Cassie. I'm Cassie Carley. I'm the Software Solution Product Manager for LTI, um, helping our lasers be even more effective in the field. And, and then Riley. Riley. Yes, and I'm Riley Pumphrey uh, with Buckley Powder, and I focus mainly in sales and tech in the Texas area. All right, thanks for joining us today, Riley. Just a quick about our agenda, about the PowerPoint, our presentation today. Talk about laser technology 101, a couple of our different laser range finders that that we offer, and the software solution uh, for this industry. And then Riley's going to talk more about the blast design of uh, utilizing our laser range finders and software in, in the work that he does every day. Just a little bit more about laser technology. We're actually in our 28th year of business. Um, we manufacture, design, distribute laser range finders that measure speed and distances. Uh, at one time, we worked with NASA doing a... Uh, ship docking laser range finder. Also, we've worked with Bush now. We've been working with them since 1994 doing the recreational range finders that do for hunting and golf. Uh, we also worked with the Forest Service over 23 years ago to, to design a laser range finder that just measured trees. Uh, this turned into a, we incorporated that with GPS devices and basically it became our first reflectiveness total station. <clears throat> We also have uh, authorized dealers throughout the world and throughout the United States. So if you wanted more information about laser technology or our range finders, you'll be able to contact those guys in your local area. Laser technology 101, uh, two types of technology. The first one we'll talk about is the phase laser. That's typically your total stations where you, you need to have a prism at, a lot of times to capture that measurement distances. Where laser technology focuses is, uh, is on the pulse laser technology, a.k.a. reflectorless. This is where you can get a, a distance or a measurement to any type of surface, uh, the, high, the, the high wall there or some piles that might be in, out in the field for you. Laser measurement 101, what our instruments do, we've got a distance sensor and a tilt sensor built inside these instruments, uh, range finders. This distance sensor gives us our slope distance or line of sight distance. And the tilt sensor measures an inclination or the tilt of the laser. Well, th with those two values there, the instrument actually is able to calculate that vertical distance or VD value and also your horizontal distance, the HD value. Again, so the laser sensor does a slope distance or, or line of sight and the tilt sensor built in measures that inclination value, and with those two values, we're able to calculate that VD and HD values. The instruments that we offer that do this, uh, True Pulse 200, uh, the distance and inclination, the range accuracy on this instrument here is we're able to get the accuracy is plus or minus, minus one foot in accuracy, and the inclination accuracy is plus or minus a quarter of a degree. These range finders get out to a thousand, over over 3,000 feet to a non-reflective target. We've got a seven times magnification for a nice field of view. And all, all these instruments that this model here comes with a serial port or an option for Bluetooth so you can transfer that data, the measurement data, down to a data collector or, or into a PC. One of our newest instruments is the True Pulse 200X. This is our most accurate instrument in the True Pulse product line. The range accuracy on this unit is four centimeters and the inclination accuracy is plus or minus a tenth of a degree. So the new with our range finders that we've done on this model specific is it added an LED display versus the LCD. An LED is you can use it in low light conditions or especially on those dark high walls, you're able to see those nice crosshair so you can get those measurements to the, to the area. We designed it in our ruggedized waterproof housing and this unit also does have serial port and Bluetooth. Uh, unique thing about the, this Bluetooth 
is we're able to also communicate not only with Windows Mobile devices, but also iOS. Just using our lasers, you can measure this to the high wall. Just get a slope distance or an inclination value to that. Or if you need to do a quick, or if you need to do a bench height, we have a routine built in. Our laser range finder is a three-point height routine. This is where you'll take your first shot to the high wall, and then you'll do a top angle, then a base angle, and with those values, the instruments will calculate that height. So just using the laser range finders in this field, you can just get a distance to the high wall, or you can do a, a bench height with our three-point height routine. Another way to do a height routine with, with our instruments is all, all you need to do is take a measurement to the top of the high wall, just to, that slope distance. The instrument, again, remember, calculates that horizontal distance and that vertical distance. By doing that, you would note that vertical distance that you've captured and then your instrument height. And with those two values added together, you're able to calculate a height real quick. One thing on this, you de definitely have to be on a level ground because, again, the instrument height, if it was 5 feet and your VD value was 25 feet, you'd have an overall height of 30 feet. And again, that's best used on, on level ground. And we know not, that's not always the case out there in, in certain areas. So another way to calculate the height of a bench, you can use a VD, VD height routine. With the laser range finder, you just take a measurement to the top of the high wall, and you'd note that VD value. Take a measurement to the base, note that VD value, and you'd add those two, val two values together and you'd get a height. So again, just take a quick measurement to the top, another measurement to the bottom. With those two VD values, you would add them together and you get a nice quick height routine. So we're going to talk more about, the, Raleigh's going to talk more about using our laser instruments and our software solution in, the, in this industry. Absolutely. Um, you know, guys, one of the uh, one of the issues that that we had, and one of the reasons why we actually bought we bought 12 units for all of our blasting crews, was uh, being able to calculate bench heights. We realized that a lot of the bench heights uh, that we thought were the right height really weren't. So this uh, allowed us to be able to get a lot more accurate measurements. Um, and like Derek just talked about. Using the vertical distance, you're able to shoot that from the top of the high wall down to the floor, or uh, from you know from the bottom of the floor up up to the high wall. So, all right. So some of the challenges uh, that we face, um, of course, safety factors involved in blasting, and um, you know the old older way of calculating burden was using a tape and burden pole, um, and you know, when you're using a tape and burden pole, sometimes it's it's tough to identify uh, voids and such in the face, which we deal with a whole lot down here in Texas. The rock is really very ratty and has a lot of voids in it. So, um, also like we talked about, measuring an accurate bench height, uh, the laser is very very easy and uh, quick and reliable. And then uh, one of the biggest things for us was uh, having a documentation. Um, of you know the actual face and each hole documented, so it and we'll get into the reporting part of that, but it's very easy to do that. And then of course, uh, getting the right burden allows us to uh, reduce air blast and vibration. Okay, so why design a blast? Um, of course, you know when we're designing a blast, we're always trying to ensure safety. Um, eliminate fly rock, and then have a very mathematical idea um, and make you know the pattern where it's where it's as uh, calculated as possible to uh, improve fragmentation and breakage. Um, and then of course you have uh, to maintain the stability of the high walls and to reduce air blast and vibration. Okay, so. Uh the software that we've created to help um, identify these things and make the calculations that are necessary in the field is called Face Profiler. Um, it makes the calculations based on the laser measurements that come in from the laser and a few items input from the user to bring um, you know, minimum optimum burden numbers, um, drill hole angles and offsets, and hole depths, and also generate hole loading parameters. Um, 
it does this by presenting the user with uh, graphical step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and then all of the shots that are taken end up creating a 2D profile image that, that can then be saved or printed with a table of data that goes along with it. So the system is capable. Um, it, like, I, like Derek has said, it measures inclination and distance and generates that 2D profile, which is really important for um, you know, being able to give to regulatory agencies. Um, it has the higher accuracy and durability with the laser itself, um, especially the TruePulse 200X, our new laser. Um, it's a lower cost in general than most other solutions, um, and it's usually packaged with um, the data collector, the software, and the laser when we do a sale. Um, it's efficient. It's quick and easy to assemble. Um, it doesn't weigh much. It doesn't take up much space. Um, as Derek said, the reflector or prism is not necessary, so it's not necessary that you have a rod man. You can do it by yourself. Um, the shots do come in instantly, but you have options of adding notes and other data to each shot, so it's really within a matter of seconds for each shot. And then users don't have to revisit sites or finish on another day because it's so fast and easy that you know you can finish it in one day and in a shorter amount of time than with traditional older methods. Um, now to the nuts and bolts of the software specs. To run Face Profiler, your data collector needs to have at least Windows Mobile 6.0 or greater. Um, it's available in both both resolution options, which is either QVGA or VGA, and you can view it in portrait or landscape. And then if you're running the installation through your PC, you need Windows Vista, XP, or 7 in order to do that. Um, I would like to go back to Riley now and see if he could give us kind of a day in his life in using the system in the field and what benefits he sees from it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Cassie. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, um, we ended up, you know, having having a hard time documenting a lot of the stuff, and of course the laser uh, enabled us to do that. But um, like I said, we bought we bought twelve of these, and most of our blasts and crews have these, um, and they use them, you know, religiously. Usually, you know, when they go out, um, they usually don't shoot a shot unless they have profiled the face, especially with our taller faces. Um, and with the voids and uh, seams, you know, that we have down here in Texas. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the setup procedure that we go through with the laser. Um, so, uh, you know, if the shot is already laid out and we want to profile the holes in, what we'll generally do to make it a you know, one person, it's very easy. You just you, you set up cones along the face directly in front of each hole, and then you'll go down to the bottom and get right in line with those holes and shoot. You'll shoot the, uh, the floor, the toe, and the crest, and then you'll shoot down the face. And, of course, we're always trying to, um, trying to make sure, uh, you know, that we get the voids as well in there so that we get good, accurate data. Uh, and then... You know, the other thing that you can do is you can set up uh, with a burden pole on top of the hole um, on, the, on that last slide, Derek, there, um, where you can actually shoot shoot just down down the face again, but you'll actually shoot the, the hole location. So, um, okay, so starting the job, what we generally do is uh, you'll go in here and just uh, create the job name and then uh, pick, select your units, uh, the minimum burden that you'd like to have, and then the offset. And, of course, what we do is we shoot a cone again, and then you just measure from the cone back, um, and it will give you, uh, it'll give you some good data. So. Okay, and this is, uh, these are the on-screen uh, on instructions where you'll actually go through, and it's very easy to follow. Uh, and that that was one of the main reasons that we actually went to this uh, to this system. Uh, we looked at some other systems, but this was the most uh, user friendly system for our blasters. You know, sometimes it's hard to train uh, blasters in this industry to be able to use uh, computers and such, but they've they've really adopted this one and, and come a long way with it. 
So they just follow the instructions here where, you know, it tells you to shoot the floor and then it'll it'll the laser will actually make a sound and let the let the blaster know to go to the next uh screen and it'll automatically go and then they'll shoot the toe and then shoot the crest. Yeah, so <clears throat> excuse me, one thing about that it's also Riley about you want to be back to, for good geometry, measurement geometry. You want to be back as as far as that high, high wall is tall. So this is a good, good demonstration of where this person set up, uh, taking those floor shots, toe shots, and crests, is you want to be back pretty far. I mean, one, for safety factors also, but it, it gives good geometry when you're taking that toe measurement and that crest measurement and all the rest of your shots. Okay, and uh, then collecting shots uh, to the face. Uh, like we talked about, you know, once you get it all set up and you've got the job, uh, and put it in and you shoot down the face, um, it'll actually show you a screen in the top here where it shows you the face as you shoot down it. So each one of those points is plotted while uh, while you're shooting. Um, and then also, um, you know, a lot of times one of, the, one of the big problems is having muck in front of the face. You know, sometimes the it's not always all the way cleaned out well, and laser tech came up with a solution to that where you'll you can actually enter the uh you know go ahead and shoot the muck, but there's a uh, there's a calculation in there that'll actually calculate some of it out, which is a really neat feature and then also um you know with the seams and stuff that you deal with, you can actually mark those and enter those into the notes so that when you go back in and you're looking at the tables, they'll be marked. Riley, if I can just interject on this shot really quick, um, that you can take the shots in any order, too. Like, if you get your shots in and it doesn't look as as tight as you want to the, the way that the features are on the face, um, you can take more shots, and it doesn't have to be above or below the shot that you already took. It can be in any order. Exactly. So after you calculate, after you get all those shots, so what's your next step, Riley? Okay. Um, yeah. So so after we've taken the shots, um, then uh, then of course you have um, the horizontal distance from the crest, um, which we entered in. But in this screen, you can actually change it, and also you can change uh, the the depth increments. So you know when you're on that table, instead of just having every one foot, if you want to make it a little bit easier to read where there's not so much data. You can change that, and we found that three feet is usually sufficient, just depending on how high the high wall is. Um, and then, of course, you're able to measure back from that cone um, and set up your blast parameters where you have the uh, correct amount of burden. Um, and then I kind of got into it earlier, but uh, um, uh, another way you can do it um, is you can actually shoot the whole location in. Where um, and this this normally takes two people, but you'll have a guy at the bottom. And then you can have um, a guy on top with either a burden pole or some kind of reflective uh, pole up top. And you can actually, after you've done, after you've already shot in, you know, the face, you can you can shoot the pole and it'll automatically calculate the offset. Um, and then, of course, you can just go down here to table or plot. Um, it'll show you the face and the table. So and those are the two ways that you mainly use out there in the field? Yeah, that, that's that's correct. Yeah, we, you know, most of the time we are using uh, the uh, the the offset, the the uh, horizontal distance from the crest, um, and we normally just set up cones and you know measure back and uh, enter the data in, and that seems to work really well. But sometimes you know if we have a if we have a guy up top and we're in a hurry, uh, we'll we'll go through and just kind of shoot in the shoot in the points too. They both work really well. Okay, so that's a way of already if the, the, the holes are drilled. Uh, another way is if the holes aren't drilled yet, but you have a, a specific, you need a drill hole parameters for a specific burden. Uh, the software is very configurable this way. There's another calculation screen where if you're looking for a burden of eight, you can hit the uh, calc optimum burden and it will give you the results. It will give you your, your HD from crest for your drill hole, your drill angle, your depth, and etc. Also, or if you needed to calculate the minimum. So there's a couple different ways uh, of calculating the, the burden here. And this, this one, this uh, 
screen, this calculation screen is just for if you're looking for a drill hole parameters for that specific uh, specific burden. So after all the all after you've collected all the shots, you've gone through and calculated your burden and everything. Uh, some here to show you the next screens here of uh, talking about the profile and burden tables. Yeah. So um, on the left here, you have uh, the actual profile that uh, the software generates. Um, on the data collector, and then at the bottom, this is of course uh, the screen for the table, which gives you an accurate measurement of the burden at every depth. So, um, and then of course on the right, I also want to point out because we use this a lot. Um, on on the right, it has a note for the maximum burden and then the minimum burden, so it's uh, real quick and easy to figure out, you know, your minimum and max. And then, uh, so most of our blasters actually carry computers and printers with them in their truck, and they'll be able to generate these reports right out in the field. So that's definitely a plus. Um, and to do this on the data collector, they will uh, they'll go down and they'll check all these. So you know, a lot of times we'll have say 20 holes, and they'll just check them all and uh, then save them. Um, and when you go to save, you'll actually, we usually generate uh, spreadsheet reports. So they go right into Excel, and you can drop them right into Excel, and then you can also include the picture um, with, with that, which is, so this is, uh, this is an example of one of our uh, reports that we did. We just pulled this one out here. So on the left you have, uh, of course, the depths, and we want every three increments. Of course, you can change that, and you can do every one foot if you'd like. But um, and again, this is a good uh, representation. The picture is of uh, something that the profiler can generate, whereas you know a burden pull really doesn't. And this also is a very good documentation. We uh, we get our blasters to uh, put these within their shot reports, and what they normally do is they. Uh, you know, they'll go across the face, shoot them all, generate the reports, and then uh, they'll actually have these. And they'll go through each one and figure out, you know, what needs to be done with that particular borehole, whether there's a lean spot where there's not a whole lot of burden. You know, they'll custom load each hole on the, on the front row, which is definitely the right way to do it. So like you said, you're printing these, printing these reports right out in the field. Yeah, we are, which is, it's, it, it's really nice. You know, the guys guys like it and like I said earlier, you know, they uh they generally won't load a shot anymore. A lot of them won't load a shot unless they have the profiles with them. Um they just you know, they feel so comfortable with them uh, and trust them. So well, that's good that's good to hear. <clears throat> so these are some of the expected results so you can see from our from our solution. You know, like Riley was talking about and Cassie, it's safe, efficient and a one person operation you can you can obtain the the data within minutes and i i and rather you can talk about this about the, the depth and burden values i mean of actual what you guys are what kind of accuracies you're seeing out there yeah our our accuracies are 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 very good we we we've compared this uh to a couple of different you know devices that we have and it seems to be spot on so it's uh it's it, it works really well. We're we're happy with them. Well, hey, thanks, Riley. So I did have um, some questions here um, before we go into this, and um, just real quick. So one of the questions that was sent through the chat was, "How far can the lasers shoot?" Uh, I'll, I'll take that one, Paul. This is Derek. Uh, the the laser can we can actually measure out to. 3,000 feet to a non-reflective target, and so I think that's plenty uh, distance for for the t this type of work. Uh, I think mainly, Riley, what, what what kind of distances do you usually measure out? Do you do uh, about 100 feet to 50 feet? Yeah, you know, it really depends on uh, the high wall that we're measuring. Um, a lot of times, uh, um, a lot of times we'll end up, you know, just just going back just over the height. That way, we can kind of see the top of the bench. Um, but yeah, I mean, so so probably the farthest away we're ever getting from the high wall is like 200, 250 feet. 
Because, you okay. know, one of our, our our tallest base is like 195 feet. So we'll get like two, 250 feet back and be able to, to shoot it really well. And So that's... Okay. Another question we had was, um, it was actually towards Riley. Riley, what did you use before LTI blasting solution? Well, well, you know, uh, we we had we had some older older range finders. Okay, we had a, a laser ace, um, and then uh, we also, you know, we, we had an MDL, a couple of older MDL. But you know, for the most part, most of our guys didn't didn't really have lasers, so this was a was a huge improvement. Um and like I said it it uh it made a lot of sense um for them, you know, because a lot of the bench heights and stuff were off from what they actually thought they were. Okay. And then um I've actually just got a personal question, just you know, learning more about this. You know, what really potentially can happen in the field um if you if you don't do this type of, you know, blast mapping, you know, I mean, wh what are the repercussions of that if you don't get as accurate as, as um, the system can produce? Well, of course, you know, you're always looking for a, a calculated blast design, like I said, where, you know, you have, uh, you know, the pattern where it's set up right. And definitely the front row is the most important part, you know, because it's, it's, it's your relief area. So if it's not set up right, then, uh, then, you know, the whole blast, isn't isn't going to act isn't going to go go all that well so i mean that's the biggest deal and then of course you know you talk about the safety hazards if if uh if you have a lean amount of burden and you shoot the shot you can have all sorts of problems i mean you know fly rock mainly fly rock and then of course you got vibration issues from the rows behind so okay and then just uh one last question it looks like another spec question um what is the height accuracy the height accuracy all depends on the rain, the the distance accuracy. So the the True Pulse 200 model that was plus or minus one foot in range accuracy. That's that'll be your height accuracy. And then the uh, True Pulse 200X, you'll be you'll get uh, the centimeter accuracy that we talked that uh, that I discussed. So it depends on model. Okay, looks hey, like the that's all the questions. I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, the right. other thing I wanted to add. Um, you know, with the with the packages you guys have, we went ahead and it, w it works really well with uh, the Pelican cases. You know, L Laser Tech went ahead and got a Pelican case and um, you know did the uh, the stands and the the data collector and all. And you know, it's it's one compact deal that the guys can carry around, real easy to set up. And that's uh, you know that seemed to work really well for us. So I just wanted to mention that. Thanks. Well, I just wanted to certainly thank um, all of our panelists today, and just to um, conclude today's webcast, I wanted just to give everyone, you know, kind of a, a call to action here. So, um, if you're interested in this type of technology, simply if you go to our website and uh, click under Professional Measurement, there's a Where to Buy uh, button, and that actually will pull up a localized, um, local authorized dealer, um, or it can get you in touch with the regional sales manager. And um, certainly we can go out and do demos um, at your facility, so please, um, you know, look us up online or you can actually call us 1-800 number at 1-800-280-6113. And then those who did attend today um, actually get to um, participate in a contest that we're doing. Um, a lot of you actually came and saw us at the, the ISEE show here in Denver, and um, just by attending the um, seeing us at the booth, that's, that was one chance to win. This uh, attending this live webcast uh, will get your name into that same drawing, but now twice. So um, the last the last chance you can have up to three. You can take a survey, and if you go to the survey um, by going to lasertech.com forward slash cmms, and um, I believe actually when this webcast is over, it will uh, default to that page. And if you just simply take a survey, that will um, increase your chances even more. So we will be giving away an entire um, mapping uh, face profiling solution with the 200X, um, a BAP data collector, and running that face profiler software. And then we also are going to, um, anybody who has um, participated, again, um, touch base with us at that show, who's here live online, um, or does take a survey, uh, we do offer a, a special pricing. So certainly um, contact your uh, North American dealer, 
um, to find out more about that. It is a North American only special. And um, if if you do place an order um, prior to May 31st, 2014, we'll honor that special pricing. So again, wanted to thank everybody for, for attending today's webcast. It um, doesn't look like we do have any more questions. And again, just for contact information here, you can um, check us out at lasertech.com. And again, if you look for an authorized dealer, um, click on the Where to Buy button. Um, there's also another um, some email information there at info at lasertech.com. So again, thank you everybody for attending, and uh, we're going to go ahead and conclude.